Uh, obviously, you scored a couple inside early. You know, there was a mid-range, some threes later. Just how does that mixing it up obviously open up your game offensively, but also things for the team offense as a whole? I mean, yeah, just taking the open looks. Um, you know, taking my open looks, driving where the open gap is, and just really playing inside out, feeding Steve. He'll kick it out for open three. Easy basketball, so. Go ahead. And then I'd say for AJ and Steve, maybe, like, you know, Max specifically, but but the team as a whole did a really nice job limiting Cardet. You know, I think four of 22 shooting. Just what kind of stood out about Max's on-ball defense and then the fact that you could limit a really good scorer like that tonight? Yeah, no, I think we all know Clay's one of the best defenders in the country, so that's why he gets he gets the toughest assignment each night, no matter who it is. And um, like you said, it wasn't just Clay's. It was a team effort. Um, I think everyone who was on him did a great job and being in their gaps and uh, just shutting him down. But... No, I think Max did a great job, and um, overall we did a pretty good job on their two best guys. So, Yeah, Clay is probably our best on-ball defender, so you know, just cutting the water short for the, their main score helped us out early just to get a lead. Jeff, go ahead. <coughs> yeah, Max, I'm just curious, specifically what were some of the things you tried to take away from him early so he didn't get off to a hot start, hot start and didn't get confident? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I played him one time back my freshman year when he was at Sanford, so I had a little uh, scouting report on him going into the game just in general, but just making him uncomfortable in terms of doing things he doesn't want to do or like to do. I uh, knew he really wanted to try to get downhill to that right hand early, so just trying to shut things off like that when uh, guys that are good scorers are comfortable with getting to, just trying to make them do something a little bit different, uh, throw a wrench in their game a little bit is just all you're trying to do. Michael? Max, uh, when Chucky went down, I guess – what immediately changed for you guys, and how did you try to go about, I guess, running the offense from there on? Yeah, just keeping it simple, really. I mean, uh, you know, we, we understood that we were going to be able to get the ball inside. Uh, wanted to do that in the second half a little bit more. Uh, and then they kind of just they went zone then later in the second half, kind of just trying to get some steals and speed the game up, I think, a little bit. But everybody did a really good job just controlling the tempo, uh, keeping it at our pace while our point guard was out, Chuck. But, you know, we'll get him back. He'll be all right. Starting with AJ and then going to the players, too. I mean, again, 20 points uh, to start out in the first half. You know, what kind of momentum do you think it gave you guys? Um, you know, the first half was just kind of teetering back and forth. And to have 20 of your 27, you know, what you finished with out there, to have that in the first half, what kind of momentum did that give you guys? Uh, I mean, it helped us a little. Uh, I think it is a team game. But uh, I think it started off with really going inside. You know, they were um, trying to double the post sometimes. and. Guys were getting lost out there, so it left the perimeter open for us to have driving opportunities and shooting opportunities. Ben. Steven Max, is, is the vibe any different with this team heading into Big Ten play than what it was a year ago? I know you guys were clipping along pretty good at this point a year ago, but is the vibe any different, the confidence level any different? Do you guys feel more confident going to the Big Ten play than you did a year ago? I'm just curious on that. <clears throat> yeah, I think we got everybody's on a really good uh, – everybody's got the same mindset going into the conference you know, season here, um, trying to take it one game at a time, keeping the main thing the main thing and focusing on the goals that we got set out for it. But I think really the biggest thing that this team moving forward is just keeping it day by day, looking, looking forward to the next practice, next, next film session, weight se session, things like that I think is what is the difference in this team heading into conference play than it was a year ago. It's just everybody's got the same mentality, same focus right now. Steven, I know this was kind of a, a rough week for uh, a lot of the guys, but I, I'm really for the program. And I think earlier today, you know, wearing the warm-ups, it said Walt Strong. I know it's a little bit of a somber question, but um, what did that mean to you today and, and getting this win? Um, I think it was huge for us um, as a program. Obviously, it's the least we could do for them and, and their family. But um, just knowing Walt, he was a great guy. And uh, like I said, the least we could do is go out and play hard and get a win, get a win for him tonight and honor him before the game. So... I thought a very workmanlike performance tonight, um, specifically defensively, to to hold uh, Cardet and Corbett or Corbet to f seven for thirty six. Um, I, I thought we did some good things there. Um, 
getting to the free throw line was important. Playing through the paint was important, important given our game plan of how we wanted to uh, approach that and keep them out of an offensive rhythm for the most part. So, um, you know, a lot of good things. Like Gilmore gave us good minutes. Um, AJ obviously was really in a rhythm and, and feeling good offensively. So I, I like how we've grown specifically defensively. Um, but there's obviously more things we can get better at. But to finish up the non-conference um, with the slate we had and the schedule we had, and I think we're in a better place. Um, and now we'll give you know we'll have a few days here for the holidays off, and then and then get back at it after Christmas and start prepping for the re-entry back to the Big Ten. So, questions? Go ahead, Nick, and then Jeff. Greg, you obviously touched on defense there. Both uh, AJ and Steve get credit to Max for some of the on-ball. It's on Cardet. Do you just go into what stood out a little bit with him specifically, but also how, how the team as a whole really made things tough shooting wise from the jump? Yeah, I thought, you know, I, I wanted to put Max on him just because of the physicalness that Max could play him with. Um, and, and then obviously we used John on him, Chucky on him, so it gave Cam even on him a little bit. But he's a really good player. I mean, and watched enough film and have seen enough to to know that he really knows he's got great size and can score in a lot of different ways. So I think just being physical and then when there were ball screens involved or he did break loose for the most part, we were able to get the ball stopped and, and um, you know, head that off. Um, but I think it started with just staying attached and, and being physical. Go ahead, Jeff. Greg, I don't know how much you can tell us. Obviously, you're much deeper this year, but how's Chucky? Do you, he's just going to get some time off to, to rest yeah, up? Yeah, he'll just have some time off. He was walking around in the locker room afterwards. So, um, you know, I think he, you know, it'll be sore, I'm sure, for a little bit. But he, um, I think he feels he's going to be fine and um, said he was going to go dunk that one before he, before he, uh, got hurt so I you know it's nice to have a bench where other guys can step up and you know I think it was good for Cam to get some more minutes and and Max and and Connor too so um you know we have some time here now to to rest up and get him back Greg the uh, the depth on this team what did you what did you see in John Blackwell tonight you know, I thought, you know, he learned a valuable lesson as a freshman that, you know, when you get two fouls, you can come and sit down for a while. And, and I contemplated putting him back in, but the two fouls he had were really a, you know, a, a, one was a, a chop down where we talked about not slapping down. Another one was a charge that we, you know, as he was sitting there before he even went in, we could see they were trying to, we had gotten some block calls when Tyler was driving. And so just things that, you know, he's, um, you know, got to continue to um, pick up as the game unwinds before he gets in. Because Max had gotten a, a slap down, a reach down foul, and, and obviously we had talked about them trying to take charges on drivers. Um, so just, just making better decisions in that way. But I, I thought he, you know, he got back in there in the second half. He was more aggressive, um, you know, did some good things. He just brings so much composure to us. And yeah, I thought that got us out of rhythm. It played, it made AJ play a lot of minutes in the first half, which quite frankly was good for AJ. I think to get him really going and playing a heavier, heavier load. Um, but John, we're going to need John. So hopefully, you know, we're, we can avoid foul trouble. But if it does happen, you know, to have depth to, to help people out is important. Uh, Greg, after the game against Robert Morris, you had said AJ Store was learning what a good shot was. He took 18 shots tonight. You think he learned what a good shot was yet? Uh, I think he's getting better. I mean, I'll go through and grade him. Um, for the most part, I don't think uh, the one thing I I want to try to have help him or have him finish better in transition. That's the biggest thing that I took away from tonight from his performance. That when he does get those two on ones, one on ones that we convert or at least get fouled in in. Um, you know, so I'll look and see, you know, is he playing off two feet? Is he going to contact? But because we're going to need those going forward, you know, I, I don't want to have an empty possession when we have a, when we have a breakaway like that, um, because he can get, put us in those positions a lot, which is good. Now we got to convert when we get those situations. But I thought, you know, I think for the most part, I didn't see any, uh, not a lot of bad shots. I think he's gotten better. You know, I've said many times he might be our most improved player. Um, in the last two months, specifically defensively, and um, you know he's got a, he's got obviously areas to, to continue to get better at, but he's he's come a long ways in a short time. Michael, 
injuries all obviously caused some problems last year. I mean, you know, what does it say about the team, though, that it seemed like the offense kind of stayed pretty similar, you know, once Chucky went off the floor? Yeah, yeah, we were pretty, you know, we were 1.27, so that's pretty efficient. You know, then we were pretty similar, 42 on 30 and 38 on 33, so actually we were more efficient in the second half than we were in the first. So um, I think the depth is a big piece of it. The experience is another p part of it. Um, you know, guys are a year older, year more mature, so they understand when we, you know, when we need to tighten the belt a little bit um, and, and continue to push leads forward. You know, take it from 15 to 25. You know, and they they understand how um, important that is and, and play continue to play the game every possession as well as possible, regardless of the of what the score becomes. Jeff. Greg, you mentioned the schedule that you guys put together, you know, so far in the season. What what do you like that you've seen from this team, both in how it's grown, but also how it's responded to some of the hits you did take because of the schedule? Yeah, I think you know the early games, Tennessee and Providence, and I mean, not that we didn't learn from games that we we won in, but I, I didn't think we were ready. Um, we weren't we weren't for, far enough along the season for what Tennessee brought at us defensively specifically providence is really the only the tw first 25 minutes is really the only probably disappoint disappointing 25 minutes that i've you know that i've had um just we just didn't respond to the physicality and i think that showed us the, how physical we have to be and and we've you know done that to other teams now um you know in arizona uh, you know the the last five minutes it went from a Five point game, I think a thirty one twenty six to forty one twenty six in about a minute forty, um, and I think just learning from that uh, did, did our week catch us a little bit, you know, in terms of having those three games. And no, not to discredit Arizona because they're a really really good team, but um, I thought we were a step slow. I thought in watching the film two or three times, so many shots hit the front of the rim. You know, we were short on a lot of things. So, but it's you know. Uh, how again another example of how when we play really physical we're much more impactful um, and effective so that's probably the biggest thing that's come from from this is we need to we need to be the hammer and not the nail Michael you said you expect Chucky to be fine but is there any major differences in the way that Max creates for others as opposed to how Chucky does uh, a little different I mean Max is a little different um you know, in terms of when he's in there, point the stuff we run. Um, you know, I think he's uh, he's a little more plays a little different pace than what Chucky does. Um, so that's you know, that's, that's the nice thing about him is that you know Chucky comes with a little burst and some quickness, and then Max is really physical and really pounds you. Um, you know, and he's a very physical player, so they're they're a little different in terms of how they're built physically and how they play. But the pace, I think, is the difference that Chucky brings when he's on the floor. Greg, I know these last few days have probably been pretty rough for you, the team, and the program and everything, and, you know, just kind of turning things around with the emotions, even wearing the Walt Strong T-shirts. You know, right. what what does that mean to you guys to come out, get a win when, you know, all this has happened? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we spent this morning up in Minneapolis at the funeral um, with – Gilmore and Wall and some of my staff went um, and, and I think you know we talk a lot and they hear me talk a lot about enjoy the moment that you're in you know you, you can't don't take it for granted um, tomorrow's not guaranteed and sometimes at 18 to 22 they think they're invincible and that nothing but I think this is nothing can happen catastrophic um, to somebody that young but watching Walt go through that um you know, and just being around his parents this morning, um, he was always so positive. He was always so upbeat. I mean, for the guy that was had an agonizing two years and specifically last month, um, you know, he just always kept a, a positive outlook on it, that he was going to beat it. And really until the last couple of weeks, I think, is where it really went downhill fast. But it, it's just a great reminder that it's, um, you know, there's much more – there are many more important things and more serious things than missing a shot or making a shot or winning a game or losing a game. And unfortunately, you know, you have these type of experiences that remind you of that as you sometimes get caught in a, um, 
you know, maybe a different uh, world, so to speak, or thought process in terms of how important it just gives perspective to things. So, um, you know, like I said, I was I was happy and fortunate that we were able to to get help to get up there um, with a plane and and spend you know forty five minutes to an hour prior to the funeral and, and then get back here because I knew we knew it was a tight squeeze on game day, but it was it was the it was the right thing to do and we needed to we needed to be there um, not only for the family but I think it was really important for Tyler and for for Carter um, to be there along with you know coach Krabinoff and and some of my staff um, coach Snyder was really close with Walt uh, former trainer Henry Perez Guerra was extremely close with Walt and really helped him early in his diagnosis um, so it's you know you just your heart goes out to Gene and Matt and his sister Claire just you know it shouldn't shouldn't happen to anybody but somebody that young it's hard to it's hard to comprehend and and uh you know I think he's in a better place now and doesn't have the pain and stuff that he had going through all that okay Anything else all right happy holidays to everybody see you next year thank you coach nice job you guys get that? See you next year. Yeah, I, got it. I gave it to the team, and I got a couple weird looks. <laughs>